Hey everybody, Kenny here. So in this video, I just wanted to go over build variety in Felsie Arbor's Mark and some of the positives and negatives regarding it. Now personally, like I'm a big proponent of build variety. Honestly, I actually prefer builds in RPGs over story content in RPGs. That's just my thing. <laughs> You give me a good leveling system, and I'm happy. So in Felseal, since it's very inspired by Final Fantasy Tactics, the build variety for a large part takes heavy and heavy credit. You know, basically gives heavy credit to those games. Well, I love Final Fantasy Tactics. I've played Final Fantasy Tactics. <laughs> I've played Final Fantasy Tactics. I played Where the Lions. I've played Tactics Advanced. And I play Tactics Advance 2. I've played all of those games. I love those games. And while I love that these devs also love those games and wanted to show their love for those games by limiting themselves to and actually and I can't really say limiting themselves by choosing to include the more powerful builds from the tactics games, they kind of ruined the amazing build diversity that they created for their own game. So I'm just going to go over some some examples of that. So once I had unlocked the War Mage class and I saw what those skills were about, you know, I had a very clear idea in mind for what it was I wanted to do as a with a character that I was using as a War Mage. So while these other things, they're what they are, it's really about the infused edge. Infused edge, you do a regular attack that you infuse with a spell, and that's a very neat idea. So this character, my Othing, like the entire idea with this character was to use the idea of being a war mage to make that character fantasy a reality. So for that, obviously the the main class you want can be just about anything that can wear the equipment that you'd prefer. Obviously, doing War Mage is a good idea, but you could also go with Fell Blade or a Duelist is a good option. But the overall idea, a character that you can go with, you know, blades or with rods that give bonuses to the elements that you're using. In this case, let's say I wanted to do a, a fire build, so want to do blazing. We're gonna have two wield and we want actually you know what it's probably a reaction isn't it <laughs> i was looking through all of the regular class passives and not the characters don't adaptive affinity that was the one characters don't elemental damage they gain a buff that increases their own damage output <laughs> yep that's the one yeah then we want and elementalism so the idea here we use our infused edge to cast our elementalism oops <laughs> cast our elementalism spells specifically the locust spells which are a single target and do much more damage now one thing we could do since we already have leech mana in here and it hits off of regular attacks you see by attacking him with that element able to give him a buff to his fire damage and what i have harry using here is gonna play a role later in the negatives as far as the diversity goes in this game. So now we're going to get our turn to go. And since our guy has a lot of attack on him, we can have him just run up to an infused edge with fire locust. And this guy is weak against fire. Do a very large amount of damage. Yeah. You see, like you can do a very effective build like that. However, Assuming any of you have played Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2, are you thinking, oh, isn't that just the Mystic class? And technically, yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Kitty Hat is pretty much exactly what that is. But, you know, but like, there's lots of things that come up in the game, like interactions between items and skills, let you do really interesting stuff. Like right now, the way I have him set up is using the Pestilence. Pestilence, I believe there's only one of these in the game. I could be wrong. I don't remember if I got this as a quest reward or part of the main story. I really don't remember. Maybe maybe I even crafted it, but I just don't recall. 
but it's the only weapon in the game that can apply multiple status effects. And while that on its own may not seem all that interesting, while leveling up, eventually you, as you get to the Plague Doctor, Alchemistic, and you notice the side effects skill passive here, and using an ability or regular attack, successfully apply a buff, also restore some health, or if you apply a debuff, you deal some damage. Thinking, oh, that's actually pretty cool. So the setup for this guy is, hey, I want to deal as many side effects as possible in a single attack. We have our side effects. In order to use Pestilence, Pestilence is a maul. And unfortunately, there's only two classes in, well, there's exception, but uh, there's only two classes in the game that directly have that as part of the equipment. And that is only, yeah, so just the mercenary and the gadgeteer are the only classes in the game. And then the Lord and Princess have a passive that allows them to equip anything. So unfortunately, unfortunately, the Gadgeteer and and the Mercenary, they don't fit as far as the build goes. they are skills we want that we just can't get if we're using them. So idea was we use Werewolf for the Focused Rage. And we have our equip ball so we can wear the pestilence as a werewolf. And we have our side effects and dark blade. And the reason for dark blade, this is the fell seal, not fell seal, fell blade uh, pass. They get chaos slice. And you know what chaos slice does? You do attack and mind damage and you inflict a random debuff. It counts as a regular attack and will and we'll use the equipped weapons element and debuffs. So. So with our setup here, getting that extra MP from our initiators. We focus rage, chaos slice. They have a very nice high damage attack there. And it's a cool idea, and I like it. However, the issue that comes up with any build in Felseal ends up being that if you have a character like Kyrie, and you have her wearing these nice strong weapons, and you have her set up to be able to use focus, which focus literally just lets you deal double damage and you have dual wield and you have attack expert. Then it kind of takes all of <laughs> the build fun out of the entire game because now with characters like this that are set up, you able to use quicken just like in the Final Fantasy Tactics games or Tactics Advanced games anyway. I mean, it was in Tactics also, but Picking definitely wasn't as useful in that game as it was in the others. Being able to just give an immediate turn to someone who just gave themselves double damage kind of takes the fun out of doing something like having two characters set up to be... having two characters set up to be mana batteries for the character that you want to deal damage using something like Focused Rage. Unfortunately, it kind of... the devs kind of took a big step forward in terms of build diversity in tactical RPGs like this, and then a real big step back because they chose to leave in the kind of broken build stuff from games like Final Fantasy Tactics and Final Fantasy Tactics events. Now, I'm not saying I don't like those things. You know, I love those games, but I've played those games. <laughs> you know, like, I, 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 I would have preferred if, you know, they had made it that you know, their interpretation of the mystic or their status effect builds or any of their human builds were just more valuable in terms of player investment than just sticking with what we already know and wiping the floor with the game that way. However, that doesn't mean that there is no build diversity that matches up with the old stuff. Because we have our buddy Zaro here, and he has all of the build variety that isn't necessarily lacking from the human characters, but that doesn't feel overcome, I suppose, by the existence of more powerful build options. For example, one of my favorite ways to use him, if we switch to the Ursine, we give him, give him a smash. I want to show something interesting, something interesting and fun. So if we do Submariner, damage is increased while in water. And it lets him swim. And we get Stampede. Damage dealt is increased by an amount for every tile the character has moved on this turn. And along with Turnabout, upon death, you will put five fire damage, mind. 
And if we look at main skills for the Ursine, we have Auto Rebirth, which is important. Hollow Body, which is also important. And Kamikaze. Sacrifice character's life to deal fire damage to all enemies. Damage increases the more HP the character has and the closer they are to the enemies. So with that, look at our equipment. Don't need flippers because using Submariner. Energy locket. Just get a little more movement out of that. And the way we'll set them up is our battery people here. We want to do here. You, 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 and the Bizarro. So, first things first. Yeah. That's what we wanted. So you are going to give Pizarro some E. Her to also give Pizarro some MP. Zara will focus. Molecular infuser. A buff. Nice. Focus. Take out whoever he can't reach. Like this guy here. Just in case. Now he. I guess should have just had her quick in him, huh? That's a weird way for me to do that. Here, maximum distance into the water. And Kamikaze, baby. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> That's pretty. That is so, so pretty. <laughs> Yeah, so you can definitely do some very fun stuff. It's just... If you want to be on the level of a Kyrie Smash build, then you really gotta go through Bizarro to get the most out of it. Anyways, that's it for me. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good one.